we like keeping up with trends here on uh, ten dollar slimer and by keeping up i mean we're usually years late to them it's true but that's uh that's really a choice we've made it's not but no nope. we're, we're gonna <laughs> go with it isn't uh so uh years ago yeah there was this trend about the the first tag and it all had to do with uh your firsts uh-huh first this first that first whatever like that explanation I yeah it was a good one <laughs> But uh, that was years ago, but fuck it. Since <laughs> nobody watches this shit, nope. we're going to do it now, decades later. Yeah. That's right, decades. Even yeah. before uh, YouTube existed, the first trend was uh, up and running. The uh, point is... There's no preparation for this video. Zero prep. So but, I mean, it's pretty simple. I gotta suck. Yep. What was the first movie you saw... In a theater. Now, obviously, I can't. Uh, I can't. That uh, you remember. Obviously. Yeah, I was about to say, I can't uh, accurately answer that. But the first one I remember, my earliest memory of a film is Toy Story, and the earliest memory of that film is the scene in which, um, pa, Mr. Potato Head is lifting weights, and his arms pop off, and I, I remember that. I don't know why. Even though I would have been. Came out in 95. would have been two. You know what's weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you did see it in the theater. It was in Arizona, I and believe. And it was in Arizona. I yep. was there. I was in the front row stroking it to Bo Peep. All right. I wasn't stroking it, but uh, I sure as hell thought about it. The point is, that had to have been one of your first movies, if not the first one. But it is the first one you remember. That is like, so the, that's that. like the earliest memory of a movie. Is an act. I had to have been. I was two. Uh, I can't remember... What came out first, but my first theatrical movie was either Jurassic Park or Terminator 2. I can't remember which one came out first. I want to say Terminator 2 came out first. I think it was Jurassic Park because I remember seeing a special edition or special uh, features on a DVD saying that the tech they used in T2 was later used in Jurassic Park. So wouldn't that that's, be that's what Terminator I'm, 2? Yes, that that's what I'm basing it on. I mean, we could just fact check. We could. Won't. Won't. The point is, it was one of those two. Whichever one came out first, that's yep. the first one I saw theatrically. I think it was T2. What was the first movie you saw, period, that you remember? Oh, I don't know. Like at all? That I remember? Yeah. It's Toy Story. That's literally the like, first No, movie. not theatrically, like overall. Like, Toy Story is literally... You sure it wasn't E.T. which you poured into your fucking eyes? No, I mean, that's... Uh, again, Toy Story is the earliest memory of a movie I have. That was two. Hmm. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty sure it was E.T., even though you hate him now. I do hate him. Pouring him into your eyes was literally what happened. Yeah. Which probably is why you hate him, because you burned your retinas. Yep. But <laughs> that's why you put on the mask, because your face is hideously scarred. It's true. From melted E.T. Reason, VHS. Reason 14, I have E.T. on my face. <laughs> literally. You just look like E.T. Yep. Interesting side note, we live to next to a neighbor that looks like E.T. Point right. is, name is Juanita. Look her up. <laughs> you won't find her. <laughs> no. Side note, you were running in the in midnight one yep. day, and Tried uh, she, she popped out of the darkness, and you nearly shot yourself. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, scary uh, to see E.T. and uh, Moo Moo yep. come out of nowhere. But anyway, we're getting off track here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first movie I remember seeing, period, is probably... Man, it's probably fucking... Uh, what's it called? You know, the one? <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is yeah. probably the first one I remember seeing. It's a good one. I I'm pretty sure I saw a million other ones before, especially with, you know, Mexican television being a clock in Mexican homes. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't remember any of them vividly until uh -huh. Temple of Doom. And, uh, yeah, so that was probably the first one I saw. What was the first boner you ever got to? Oh, the taking it to the limits. Boner I ever got to? Yeah, not the greatest phrasing, but what was the first thing that gave you boner? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. I don't know what the hell that previous yeah, question I don't know was. What shit that you was. drove to an actual boner? I don't know. Now, I have mentioned this before, and that was uh, that was uh, Dorothy in uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the fence scene. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the fence scene had me pitching a tent. Let's just say that. And I was like, well... This is a thing. Yeah. The old Wizard of Oz yeah. fence scene. Yeah. Pitching tent since 19, whenever the fuck it was made. 32, I believe. I don't know. I don't freaking remember, dude. Point is, yeah, I can... Uh, Full color pedant. Pe nah. Screw it. 
Okay. That was so <laughs> one, weird. One, one, uh, one. I don't remember what the first boner I had to, but I remember what the first thing I ever whacked. Why did you keep saying it that way? The first boner I had to? Yeah, why do I keep saying it I that way? I don't know. I seem to be obsessed with getting to a boner, which is disturbing. But the yeah. point is, I can't remember what the first boner I got was to. Maybe that's what I there intended to say. But I do remember the first time I whacked it. And it was to... Now, I don't remember exactly what this was. Uh, like who a picture of it... Who the picture was of, I should say. But I remember the picture somewhat vividly. I know it was on the cover of like one of those, you know, market rags. Like people and shit uh. like that. And I was at a barber shop. Okay. And I pick up this rag and I go, uh, speaking of rags, Scott Joplin. <laughs> I pick up the, the first boner rag. It was one of my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> I stroked it to the Joplin's boner rag. Yeah. But no, uh, I picked up this old rag magazine and I was like, well, what's this? It was a court. And I'm almost sure it was something from Baywatch because I remember a red bikini. But I may have been too young for Baywatch. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think Baywatch was out at that point. Point is, I started stroking young, but the point is, <laughs> I look at this picture and there's this chick in the red one piece, right, in the corner of this uh, uh, market rag, and I'm like so enticed by this, completely like boggled as to why this is even remotely a thing that's making me pitch a tent. I don't even know what that means at that point, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm so enticed that I cut the picture out. I've done that. And I put it in, in, in my pants, right? Uh-huh. And then, look, I don't know if you've ever been to a barbershop. Uh, I say uh, that because... You no, know I have. So. I, well, yeah. <laughs> I say that because clearly I don't frequent them because I'm bald. But yeah. uh, I mean, no one knows that, but okay. Anybody that's been to a barbershop knows that nobody gives a shit about those magazines. They've nope. been there forever. God knows. They probably have turds on them by then. But somehow, okay. by some wicked twist of fate... Somebody actually goes, who cut the picture out of this magazine? And they're mad about it. I bet you someone was going to stroke it to it. And, well, hold on. It was some fucking person, you know. It was it was a customer. And the barber clearly doesn't give a fuck, right? And he's like, uh, I don't know. What the fuck? But then this fucking guy all of a sudden becomes Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and he's like asking left and right, who the fuck took this picture? And I'm like, what the fuck is this Inquisition shit? Anyway... We finally get home because, you know, who gives a shit about that piece of crap? And uh, I rub one out <laughs> to this picture. And now, I don't even know how I knew to rub one out. You know, I didn't even hang out with fucking kids because I didn't give a fuck about them. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just was like, this is causing a reaction. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. I don't know what this is leading. I know I didn't come because I didn't mm-hmm. know what the fuck that was. But I was rubbing one. Yeah. So I guess I just rubbed one. I didn't rub one yeah. out. But the point is, God, it's horrible. Well, well the you point it, is, you do it at a certain age. You don't actually like rub one out. You just kind of. No, rub I, I know I didn't finish because because later I was like, holy shit, that's finishing because that shit's awesome. But I know this. I got caught, <laughs> and uh, that wasn't cool. So <laughs> so my mom goes, "You had the fucking picture." What the fuck? And I'm like, damn it, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> if you would have just shut the hell up, it would have just been some yeah. random picture. But I was this consp- part of this big conspiracy now. Just to add uh, to the rubbins, first one we rubbed out to, Jennifer Tilly and uh, Brad Chuggy. Oh, well, yeah, that's a, that's a classic rubber. Yep. Multiple times. Yeah, I don't think... We've discussed this before. <laughs> yeah. But it, it bears... Uh, uh, repeating, and that's uh, Jennifer Tilly earned her a many a come. Yep. Now I'm just afraid that I say that I'm gonna get like, like a, a accused of something. Yeah. Like Jennifer Tilly's gonna come out of the woodwork nah, and go. She, she seems. Hey, cool. uh, this guy fondled me back in the day, and I'm like, dude, I was like two states away rubbing it out to Bride of Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody's gonna be like, fuck that guy, James Franco style. Yep. I think he's gonna get away with it. It's the weird part because you know he looks like a he definitely is looking like at him. a weirdo. And people out. have accepted that. What a hang It's out weird. Him. The point is anyway. People we're getting off track people. here. It's weird. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. First. Uh, first. Uh, first. First TV him. crush. Go or TV or movie crush. TV or movie crush. What was that? First, first of all, me trying to buy time because I can't think of anyone. Failed miserably. Yep. I can tell you mine in the meantime while you think about it. Yeah, you probably should. And mine is uh, this doll right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, uh, Gillian Anderson mm-hmm. who portrayed Scully. 
when I first, when uh, the X-Files first came out, I was like, holy shit, a show about shit that I like? UFOs and monsters and shit? And ghouls? But then I was like, what that is right there, that's right, it, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Some weird fucking, like, I was going to say uh, uh, urban person, but that's uh, fucked yep. up. But uh, anyway, I was like, what, what that is? Literally, that's what I said. And uh, my, my penis was interested, <laughs> is all I'll say. All right. And has remained interested to this day. Now, I know there's a real answer, but for some reason, the only thing I can think of is DW from Arthur. <laughs> despite, the fact that the know, despite the fact that I know that's definitely not that. Hold up. For some reason, that's the only thing I can think of. You're telling me, wait, is it just what you just can think of? or that That's the only thing I can think legitimately of. Legitimately, at one point, no, no, you no, were no, like, no. yeah, I'm def, right. def, I would def, no. I like that. I wouldn't bang DW. That Okay, I got one. It wasn't the first, but it's one that I can think of, and I want to rub off DW. Gross. <laughs> Uh, and that's Willow from Buffy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew someone who looked like her, and I was like, I was like, I made it a, a goal to get with that. I partly succeeded. It failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the only thing I can think. I know there was someone else, and I, I, I honestly, the, the if I'm gonna give you the real answer, that it's Dorothy, but I don't want to give the same answer because yeah. I already did before. So, you. for some reason, the first thing that I thought of was DW from Arthur. What was the first movie that made you go, that's it, I'm a movie geek? Oh, that's hard. I don't know, man. Because I don't, I don't think... There was a there was an era where I was like, yeah, I, I really loved these movies. But I, but I was, it was like... Uh, yeah, but it was like kid love. Like, yeah. You know, there was a bunch of kids in. Uh, so I don't know. Probably something weird. Like a... Like a... Like a zombie. I'll or... tell you exactly what mine is. And maybe it'll jar your memory a bit. Uh-huh. But mine was... I had already seen movies. I, in fact, I loved movies. Uh, specific movies. Like I was like in love with uh, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, Terminator... Conan the Barbarian and Beetlejuice. Those were like my kid movies. I fucking love those. Yeah. Others that I love too, like uh, Dawn of the Dead and Creep Show and stuff like that. That's stuff that I watched as a kid and loved. But the moment when I realized I love movies in general, cinema, <clears throat> trash cinema, didn't matter, just movies as, as a whole, was uh, I, one of the few times I got to meet my, my dad and I was taken to... Start playing the violins. Yeah. <laughs> I was taken to his his farm. He had this fucking expansive farm land uh, in uh, the next state over. And uh, we went there and I met all these people. He had a fucking chimp. No joke. Mm. Uh, you know, fucking Michael toucan. Jackson style. A toucan. Fucking ostriches that hated me. That began the whole thing about ostriches hating me. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it was a weird trip. But what struck me the most was that he had this room full of movies. Just movies upon movies. Good movies, bad movies, shitty fuck flicks that you would never ever see. You know, just just movies. And uh, they led us into this room, me and a bunch of other kids. Uh, some of which I don't know who they were. Probably, probably more of his kids, who knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most likely. And, and they go pick a movie and watch it, each one of you. And that's kind of what we spent doing that whole day. And I went around... And uh, the other kids had already picked their fucking movie. In fact, I remember clearly that two movies had gone by and I still hadn't picked mine. I didn't even watch the other two movies that they picked. Because I was so entranced by what was in front of me. There were so many options. It was like the ultimate fucking blockbuster or some shit. And then I saw a cover that made me go, I have to see this. And I took it up to uh, to my dad, who had for some reason been like, all right, yeah, you can see this approving them, I guess. And he goes, ah, you sure you want to see this? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, all right, fuck it. Cool. And that movie was The Toxic Avenger. And it was the first movie that I saw where it was like, they didn't give a fuck about a rating. Yeah. They didn't give a fuck about anything. Yes, it was trash. Yes, it was vile, it was silly, it was stupid, it was wild, it was punk rock in, in film form. But that's when I said, 
holy shit, this is fucking amazing. Movies can be anything at that point, you know. And that was the movie that did it for me. I was like, from that point forward, I was like, this is awesome. I'm, I'm about the film life. Honestly, Represent. I honestly can't remember mine, but uh, I'll tell you the first time I I I I, I thought uh, the first time that I started grasping how not in how important, but uh, like when a movie was made. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if you remember this, but it was it was after we saw Rocky Horror mm-hmm. that I asked you when was this movie made. <laughs> And how then you were like seventies, and I was like, "Whoa, they did that in the seventies!" And that was like my measure of time for a long time. And and then that kind of got me interested in like you know th- how movies were made around certain times. And I, I guess that's like the furthest back I can think of of like an yeah, interest beyond anything. Yeah, anything yeah. that takes you to that level where you're like, "Whoa!" This another is... another big one was uh, Big Trouble in Little China. In that, that was the first time I was like, man, I would like to do some effects shit. Of course, nothing came of that. But uh, that's when I really noticed, like, practical effects, despite the fact that I had seen playing movies that had them before. Yeah. That was the first time I was like, man, that's cool. And the first, I'll give you another one. The first time that I was like, damn, this is what movies can be, was uh, actually Sin City. Because that was, like, kind of, like, different mm-hmm. back then. You know, I hadn't seen something like that. I mean, obviously, there's more stuff like that now, but at that time, I was kind of like blown blown away by what what they did. Yeah, it was pretty groundbreaking. <clears throat> so I that I would say that just to substitute the fact that I couldn't think of mine. Pretty good, pretty good. I got another one for you, and hopefully, you'll remember this one. Yeah. What was the first comic you ever owned? I think. I think it was a Popeye comic. And I think it was yours. That makes sense. It had I'll no, tell you what. It had no cover. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm, 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 I'm airing out the laundry. I had a massive collection of Conan the Barbarian comics from Marvel Comics Group. back in the. That's right. Marvel Comics Group is what I'm calling it. <laughs> yep. You know, the 80s, they published a, a comic book, you know, and I had a huge fucking collection like massive man it was big like if you if you bagged and boarded them it would feel like a box and a half that's how many i had of course i didn't have bag and board but the point is it was big and i gave them to you and somehow this has escaped your fucking memory and i don't even know where these comics ended up that so many comics disappeared is shocking to me because it was a fuckload of them and then one day i asked you hey let me see those conan comics and you're like Conan comics. I don't remember this at all. What is this? And I was like, "What? Where are they?" And I remember asking uh, 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 the grandmother, "What the fuck? Did you throw these things away?" And she was like, "Huh? Oh, no, what? No, I don't know. What the fuck?" And mom and I was just perplexed. So these motherfucking comics fucking Roanoked out of your possession. But you had them. I do remember reading. A, now that you say it, I do remember owning a com, a, a Conan. Dude, comic, I had so but many. But I don't remember. Uh, and it was the Marvel Comics one. And I, and, and I had so many of them. So fucking many of them. I even had the first time the Thulsa Doom appeared in a comic. Which he wasn't, you know. He was not a character that yeah. appeared in anything until the movie. But I had that one. It was a, it was an annual, if I remember correctly. Like, all that shit. And just vanished nope so there you go I don't remember that but all you but you do remember Popeye I do remember which was Popeye. a hand me down dude I remember Popeye hardcore point I, is I had an era where I was really obsessed with Popeye cartoons and I think that's why I remember the Popeye comic it also came with a Richie Rich but Richie Rich is for losers it is um, it is but yeah I definitely don't remember that I will give you the first time I remember uh, being interested like I'm like damn freaking comics are for me dude and that was after I read You Let Me Read. Um, really, it was The Tick. Mm-hmm. But uh, more realistically and more seriously, Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. Or Dark Knight Returns, Returns. sorry. Yeah. Dark Knight Returns. And I was like, damn, do some good shit. The Tick was more like, this is funny and cool. Yeah. Whereas Dark Knight Returns, I was like, damn, this is freaking good. 
And that's one of those that, like, later I reread and I like, kind of understood more of what it was doing. And it just got better. Yeah, I, uh, yeah uh, I'm trying to remember what the first uh, comic that incited that feeling in me was. And I will in shortly, as I think, and uh, by time. Yeah. No, but the, the first comic I owned was a Casper comic. That's right. Friendly fucking ghost. All right. And, uh... I actually kept this comic for the longest of time. It ended up falling apart with age. Was it blue? The cover, yeah. Oh, I somehow yeah. remember. And this eventually comic. the cover fell off. Yeah, and, and that then might it was have just, been one of the comics I had. Yeah, eventually it just it just became, you know, a rag. Yeah. <laughs> so Scott Joplin wrote about it. Yeah. <laughs> Want to hear a song about it? Here Casper it goes. Rag, coming soon. Yep. Even though he's dead, yep. but uh, so he's a ghost too. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost comic. And uh, I had not, I knew comics existed, but I didn't give a fuck about them, really. Mm -hmm. and, but one day, our uh, mom came from work, and I was just a kid. And uh, for some reason, she gave me this Casper comic. And I was like, what's this? And, I mean, I didn't ask that precisely, but I was confused as to why the hell I was being given this comic. And she goes, I thought you'd like it. No, I didn't say it fucked up. And she was like, I thought you'd like it. No, no, yeah. that's not the impression I'm getting. She said, like, it was like a genuine, like, I th I think you'll like this yeah. type of thing, you know? And, I mean, still, it was a kid's comic. But the mere fact that she put thought into it. Yeah, it was like, yeah. Yeah, made, it, made, it, made me give more of a value to that comic than yeah. anything. And that kind of spurred my interest in comics. All of a sudden, it became, what else can I find in this and it was really kind of like a motherly approval type of thing even though that makes no fucking sense but you know from a kid's point of view it does yeah. make sense and then it just kind of spurred on from there and, and you know eventually i became involved because i actually liked them now i'll tell you the moment now that i'll tell you the moment when i was like comics is the shit now i was aware of superhero comics and all that stuff but i wasn't really interested in them because they were so heavily serialized yeah that it was impossible to collect them f as a kid you know, so I was just like, eh, I'll stick with the Archies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you don't have to fucking do shit. But, uh, you don't even have to read them because yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> it's the same shit every time. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, one day I was at a supermarket and I look at the comic racks. Back then they had comics in supermarkets. You know what? You're right. And I forgot this. And I saw a Tales from the yep. Crypt comic. And in fact, I still have that comic, only I had to replace it because the other one I wore to the bone. Mm -hmm. And I actually bought it from a friend, and it was the exact same comic. Uh, but I saw Tales from the Crypt, and they were reprinting them at the time in double-sized digest, I mean, double-sized issues. And I fell in love with comics because I was so in love with horror. And I was just like, every time that I could find a Tales from the Crypt or a Haunt of Fear or whatever, I, I would snatch it up and then you know and these became i never was uh you know keen on trading stuff and but they were so rare and hard to find for me that those became comics that i actually did trade you know and sometimes i hated the fact that i traded them but i wanted to read more stories so yeah there was this asshole named james that i that i made friends with he was a cocky piece of shit but the only reason i made friends with him was because he had tells from the crypt comics and he too was like Almost like the fucking Feanor with the Silmarils. He didn't want to let them go. I was about and, to say Gollum, but okay. And, uh, you know, we would trade. We would trade the comics. And, uh, yeah, man, that, that was the first time I was like, this yeah. is the shit. I will say that that was probably the first comic that looked interesting to me that I can remember. But it was also one that you wouldn't let me read because I was a child. Uh, it wasn't because of the content. It was because you didn't want my grubby mitts on it. Yeah. You did have uh, notoriously grubby mitts. I'm not going to go ahead and say that my uh, mitts are still grubby. <laughs> yep. But, uh, you know, they're literally grubs. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man, that was like, moo. I will say, and I'm going to come clean now, that one time. Not literally, of course. No, I was, that's literally impossible. One time I did sneak, sneak a peek at mm -hmm. an eerie that you had. And I was like, man, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I remember the the tale was like some dude was in like a freaking moon or whatever, and at the end he becomes the freaking weird moon head in in in, the, in Mars or whatever. It was weird, but I remember liking it. That is the worst explanation I've ever heard. Yep, but I'm gonna ride with it. Mm -hmm. 
What is the first book you ever read? Well, there's only like now. This is a small three. list. This is a very small <laughs> there's list. There's only like three. I think it was Help on Heart. No, we're not counting like shit for school. Yeah, no, that's because uh, uh, technically it'd be the Odyssey. <laughs> Like, you never want to read even if the the book is cool and school tells you to do it you don't want to read it yeah so it's not for for any, the right reasons yeah uh so i'm gonna go ahead and say uh can has strikes back <laughs> <laughs> strikes a back apparently <laughs> it's italian it was uh, strikes a back it was uh yeah it was probably hell on heart um and i remember liking it quite a bit um i don't remember why i read it Probably because I had seen Hellraiser and I thought it was cool. I told you to read it. I yeah. remember that. I remember really liking the descriptions that it had. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Barker's and, a master at that. Like, like, yeah, there was like weird little details. Like, uh, if I remember correctly, he describes the smell they give. Yeah. And vanilla. I was like, man, it's kind of like the vanilla covering rot. rotting. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, after that, I think it was uh, Casino Royale. And it took me several restarts. Yeah, uh, not because it's a long book, but because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Uh, the first book I ever read was Salem's Lot, Stephen King, which began my love affair with Stephen King. Literal love affair. Yep. He groped me. Mm. Hashtag me too. It was actually sucking you off right now. Yeah. <laughs> Quite disturbing. He's pretty good at it, though. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that was the first book, you know, that wasn't some bullshit. You kind of had, you know, I was, back. I was pretty fucking young when I read it, but... Uh, I was so obsessed with horror, and I read about Salem's Lot and horror mags and shit, you know. And I was like, "This, I gotta read this." And I remember going to the adult section of the library because they had a kids section that sucked my asshole. Yeah. And I was like, "Dude, can I just go to the adult section?" And they're like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "You mean this whole fucking time I could have just gone over there?" I was a kid, so yeah. forgive me for that. But so I go over there, I find the damn thing. Uh, uh, tip of the hat to, to the decibel system, I guess. Yes, do we? <laughs> I, I find what up. I find the fucking thing, and I go up to the the librarian, and she says, "Are you sure you want to read this?" And I'm like, "Nah, man. I just look for this bitch for no reason." Yes, I want to read this, and then she tells my grandmother to be careful with what I'm reading, and I'm like, "Oh man, this is this is not gonna end well." Mm-hmm. Thankfully, Granny didn't give a fuck. And uh, that was the first book I read that was, you know, an actual book, an actual book of worth. And I was like, hell yeah, this kicks ass. And ever since then, I've been chugging books like, uh, I don't know, Barney or something in the Simpsons. God damn. Worst. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, that was the first, first concert we've ever been to. First concert I've been mm-hmm. to? You know what it was? It was the Necromantics. Um, you mean along. the even the one where you were like, oh, gotta was, go home. That was the first time I've been to a concert. Um, and I was young, and uh, it was kind of like in a freaking dingy ass dive bar. There was like th- there was like three people, and you're already it was already full somehow. So imagine like hundreds of people in there freaking going like this and shit. So and it was a long, long thing. We were there. I, what time we get? We were like five maybe. Yeah. And. Uh, Necromantics didn't go on till twelve, uh, but there was other bands, so you know we we're and they were awesome and they were really cool, yeah. So uh, the reason why we went there, we actually left. By the time uh, Necromantics came out, I was uh, pretty much dying because uh, we didn't get any drinks or anything, and uh, you know you kind of have to stock up on drinks when you go to something like that. And uh, yeah, the the crowd started getting into it a lot, and uh, wasn't ready for that. Moshin kind of scared the shit out of me. I almost got killed. And I uh, almost died. So we were like, yo, I'm freaking, let's leave. Thankfully, we had f- filled our quota on coolness. So we didn't feel too gypped. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty great show. One of the greatest, dare I say. Uh, first show I went to was uh, Patsy Cline. No, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, well, was it Scott Joplin again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, the I'm dead rag was the, yeah. the opening and closing. It was pretty cool. Uh, first one I went to, I'm pretty damn sure the first one I went to was an Alan Jackson concert. Yeah, my boy. Uh, back in the day, you know, I'm pretty fucking sure. If it wasn't that, did then he they rocked the jukebox. He did. They they inflated this massive jukebox, 
and it rocked. That mm-hmm. was corny. Yep. Uh, it was that or the Clint Black one, and I can't remember which one came first, but I'm almost 100% sure it was Alan Jackson. And I went to a lot of country concerts in the 90s, you know, before country completely fucking ended up sucking. Yeah. Uh, but those were mostly because I hitched along with my older brother before he started sucking completely. I see a pattern there. Yeah. Huh? But anyway, uh, but the first concert I decided to th- go see for just me for nobody else but just me was uh uh I, well it was a no doubt concert but the openers or the supporting acts i should say uh was uh, the supporting act was garbage and the opening act was the distillers so i really went for garbage and uh but i like no doubt too so i stayed for that obviously and uh Gwen Stefani's hot so whoosh, 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 went my eyes yeah and uh, pitched the tent yeah but uh, anyway, um, and then I ended up discovering the distillers there too, so that was awesome. So yeah, that was the first one I went just for me, for my purposes, which was to which was to stroke be- it, beat it in the crowd. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was awesome. And uh, what are the first do we got? I forgot. The... Let's let's hold off on that. Let's okay. split it off here and do a part two. Go, because I kind of like it. And uh, hit like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for part two.